Let's talk about Prop 13. What is it? What's it do? And most importantly, why should it matter to you regardless of whether or not you own a home? So Prop 13 was a ballot initiative basically to reduce property taxes. It passed back in 1978 and it passed overwhelmingly. It got about two thirds of the, uh, of the vote. So to put in context for why Prop 13 is so important today and to really better understand the impact that it has and that it has had for the last 40 years on home values, it's really helpful to understand what the environment was for property taxes prior to Prop 13. So before Prop 13 passed, the average property tax rate throughout California was around 3%. So that's three times higher than today. And what was even worse perhaps was that there were no caps, there were no limits on how much those property taxes could go, go up from year to year. There was no limits on how much assessed values could be raised. So before Prop 13, it wasn't uncommon for assessed values on some properties to go up 50% or more just from one year to the next. Fortunately, Prop 13 fixed all of this. It did a few things. It limited the amount that property taxes could increase to no more than 2% per year, provided that the owner doesn't sell the property. And what if a property was actually sold? Well, the property would then be reassessed at 1% of the sale price. So if the property um, were to sell for $4 million, that first year property tax bill would be $10,000. And then after that, after that first year, again, taxes can't go up more than 2% a year. Again, before Prop 13, homeowners always had to hold the breath when they were opening their property tax bill because they didn't know. Maybe it's gonna go up 2%, maybe it's gonna go up 100%. Anything was possible. Now they have near complete predictability and they can plan what their property tax bills are gonna be one year, five years, 10 or more years down the road, provided that they hold onto the property. So let's illustrate this. Let's assume that you purchased a house in Willow Glen on January 1st, 2017, and that the purchase price was a million bucks. The property tax in this home, again, would be 1% of that purchase price, which is $10,000 for the first year of ownership. Now, the actual bill would be closer to 1.2%, given there's some local fees, assessments, and charges, but we're going to ignore all this. We're talking about Prop 13, which is just the property tax portion. Now, here's the thing about Willow Glen. In 2017, the homes in Willow Glen appreciated over 25% in one year. So at the beginning of 2018, this home that you would have purchased for a million dollars 365 days before is now worth over one and a quarter million dollars, over a 25% increase. That said, your property tax bill for 2018, it can't go up more than 2%. That's the beauty of Prop 13, once you get your foot in the door and you know, become a homeowner. There's a few other things that Prop 13 did. Um, all of them should be pretty reassuring for California homeowners. So it required a two thirds vote by both houses of the state legislature uh, before any measure or bill that would increase state taxes could pass. Another thing it did is it requires voter approval for any local special taxes. So if a city or municipality is looking to hike taxes for a special purpose, let's say to build a park, that's something that Prop 13 requires the voters to get a say on and two thirds of a vote is required for passage. So we asked up front, why does Prop 13 matter? I'd hope at this point the reasons are pretty obvious, but to reiterate, it made the taxable value of property more stable and predictable, and it did it by capping the amount that the assessed values could increase year over year. No matter what the market does, your property tax bill can't go up more than 2% a year. And of course, what it also did is it cut the overall property tax burden from what was 3% on average to what is 1% now for new owners, and again, Given the way we see homes appreciated in the Bay Area, um, after a few years of ownership, your effective property tax rate is going to be less than 1% relative to the actual value of your property. Now, here's the catch. Sure, municipal property tax revenue, that went way down with the passage of Prop 13, but 
the cities, they made, found a way to make that revenue up and they did it by jacking up sales taxes, hotel taxes, and utility taxes. So California, even with Prop 13, still has one of the highest combined tax burdens in the country. That revenue is just not coming from property taxes like it was before Prop 13. So what's that mean? What it, what it effectively means is that if you're a California resident, you're living here long term and you're not reaping the benefits of Prop 13 in the form of significantly lower property taxes, then effectively you're subsidizing those who are. So let's talk about some of the less obvious reasons why Prop 13 matters, particularly if you're one of those people who are looking at buying or selling a home in the coming years. Think of these as the unintended consequences of Prop 13. So the biggest one by far is that Prop 13 has made it harder, not easier, on first-time home buyers. In fact, the home ownership rate in California is 55%. That's about 10% lower than the national average. So what's Prop 13 have to do with it? Well, simple, it comes down to supply and demand. And Prop 13 has significantly reduced the turnover of property, people just selling their houses and moving locally. What that has done, of course, is to reduce the supply of homes. And we all know what happens when supply is constrained and, dem and demand is not, and it's particularly if demand is growing through population growth. The fact is that the share of properties that have been sold each year in California, that's dwindled since Prop 13 passed in the late 70s. For instance, in 1977 and 78, 16% of all the residential property inventory was turned over. It's sold. That's the year before Prop 13 passed. In 2014, 2015, three times smaller share, about five to 6%. So you may be asking, what does Prop 13 have to do with the fact that there's three times less housing inventory than before? Well, you need to understand that in a quickly appreciating market like ours has traditionally been, homeowners receive greater tax relief. They receive a more and more benefit from Prop 13 the longer that they stay in the home. Simple way to illustrate this is a Cupertino home that we sold this summer. The home sold in, um, in early July for $2.25 million. Now the sellers purchased this home 18 and a half years earlier and their purchase price was 640,000. So we know from Prop 13 that your first year assessed value is the same as your purchase price. So their assessed value was 640,000. By the time they sold the house in 2021, their assessed value had risen after 2%, 2%, 2% year after year after year to $883,000, which would equate to a property tax bill of roughly nine grand a year. So since a property is reassessed upon sale, at 1% of the purchase price. That means that the buyer's assessed value is what they paid for it this year, $2.25 million. So the buyers are looking at paying roughly three times the property taxes for the exact same home that the sellers were paying just a few months earlier. Now, in cases like this where the sellers are over 55 and the home they're selling is their primary residence, there is another provision, Prop 60, that may may enable them to avoid paying higher property taxes. But that's a subject for another video. The fact is Prop 60 doesn't apply to every seller and it doesn't apply to anyone who's younger than, who's younger than 55. So the fact is since Prop 13 has passed, we have more people in the Bay Area. We have more high paying tech jobs than ever before. We certainly have lower mortgage rates than pretty much any time in history. We know, particularly since COVID, that the growth of the US dollar money supply, the M2 money supply, has significantly skyrocketed. And yet, we have less homes for sale. Is it any wonder then that home prices continue to go up and go up as quickly as they do? Now, we, I know that Prop 13 doesn't have anything to do with a couple of these items, for instance, the Fed printing dollars, but all of these things together have combined to make homes in our market much more expensive which of course makes it tougher for first time home buyers to take that big plunge and enter the market. Here's the thing, there's a silver lining. Because of all these factors, especially our out of whack supply and demand dynamics, for the past 40 years, properties here in the Bay have appreciated much more quickly and much more consistently and reliably than almost anywhere else in the country. 
and long-term homeowners have seen their net worth explode due in large part to all this home equity. So you can say at least in part, they can thank Prop 13 for this. All right, that's it. Hopefully you're still awake. Uh, if so, and if you found any of this useful or informative, uh, please like or subscribe. We'll keep making these informational videos. We'll keep them coming. Uh, we're also probably going to try to make some how-tos on design, remodeling, as well as some periodic market updates. So thanks so much for watching.